Ah, kijk eens. Oké. Okay. Goedemiddag allemaal. Dank voor jullie, uh, voor jullie komst. Ik ga jullie vandaag wat vertellen over Digital Asset Management en dan specifiek met het open source product Media Moza. Ik zal vandaag uh, door een aantal uh, uh, omlopen eerst even kijken naar wat, uh, wat trends en uitdagingen die erbij horen. Uh, any English speakers, by the way? So, I continue in Dutch or English? English, English. oké, okay, sorry. Ja, yeah. welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so, I'm going to walk through some trends and challenges uh, that the, the current world gives us, the, the, the requirements that brings with it, and look into the solution that we uh, uh, developed, Media Mosa. After that, we'll discuss some use cases, and uh, I'll tell you something about how to get involved or get started with your own Media Mosa based project. A little bit about myself. My name is Chris Flink. I work at Inuit. Inuit is an open source company based in Belgium. The headquarters are in Antwerp. And I work at the Rotterdam office and we also have an office in Kiev. Um, we are a strong open source focused company. And uh, we have, well, we do both operations and development. And doing that together for like over five years now um, gives us quite a good view on how development and operations should work together and that's why we do a lot of DevOps evangelization at the moment and um, yeah, help other people and other companies work together with development and operations as, uh, as we think they, uh, they should. We also have the um, uh, core developers of MediaMosa uh, on our payroll. So we really know what we're talking about and uh, do, do a lot of media mouse implementations at uh, various companies. So to look into some trends and, and challenges, I, uh, I was a bit lazy and picked up the KPCB uh, trends report. I don't know if you, if you know it. Um, I'll post the slides uh, online and you can, you can find the link. It's a really nice overview with, uh, with a lot of numbers about the usage of uh, uh, the, the internet, mobile applications, the internet of things, all, all kind of, uh, kind of things. Um, but what you see there are, are some interesting patterns. Um, when you used to go to the club, you see a lot of people dancing, going out and enjoying themselves. And nowadays you see everybody capturing their moments, making movies, photos, sharing them online, and do all this with their small uh, personal devices. Photos are quite, quite well uh, um, introduced at the moment. They're, they're they're really popular. You see a lot of use, uh, usage of, of video at the moment, but it also um, you see sound and and data. Personal data is uh, is emerging, and not only the creation of this data, but also the usage of this of this data is uh, is growing. Um, you see rich media in, in applications, on websites, uh, on, in cars, in, in, in small home screens, uh, near, near casting uh, apps, and anywhere. And well, as developers, we should take care of uh, the provision of these media to all these devices with all their uh, various specifications. Um, meanwhile, in Belgium, uh, something inter interesting is going uh, is starting there too. Um, I'm going to show you a short movie of that. It's in Dutch, by the way. We leven in een digitale wereld. Bijna alle informatie die we dagelijks gebruiken is digitaal. Maar dit was niet altijd het geval. De afgelopen eeuw is er in Vlaanderen een schat aan archiefmateriaal op analoge dragers vastgelegd en verzameld door archieven, musea en omroepen. Maar omdat dit materiaal in archieven ligt opgeborgen, kan er bijna niemand naar kijken en luisteren. Ondertussen verouderen deze dragers en dreigt hun waardevolle inhoud voorgoed verloren te gaan. Terwijl die eigenlijk voor iedereen toegankelijk zou moeten zijn. Daarom gaan we dit materiaal die. Okay. 
I'm afraid I lost my connection. And there it is. Ah, not gonna work. Sorry for that. It's too slow. Um, Uh, slide does it. Okay, so um, in Belgium they're starting a, a project to digitalize all the, uh, the the video material that is stored in, in archives but they also will uh, in, ingest all the new newly created materials into one centralized um, storage system and the, the, the things that you will that you would hear in this uh, video is that they say it should be uh, available, accessible, open for everybody, so it can be used in future applications. And this is a trend that we see that uh, you have a lot of companies or, or, or musea or uh, whatever, heritage institutes, that have a collection of interesting stuff in a proprietary system that they'd like to, to share with the world and they, they run into yeah, various uh, problems and then they, they figure, okay, for a new system it should be flexible, it should be open, it should be, well, in the cloud, web-based, uh, service-oriented and of course the data needs to be really well described so that you can reuse it because if you only have the data without the metadata you cannot really reuse it or find it. So that's where MediaMosa comes into play. Uh, like I said, MediaMosa is a digital asset management system and it can store, prepare, retrieve and after that you can share the, any digital asset. So it can be video, audio or even files, bundles of files, text files, PDF documents, you name it and you can store it. And it has, for, uh, it has some specific functionalities for each phase of the uh, process that I'm going to walk through. So to start with storing the digital assets, it doesn't really matter what type it is, but you can describe it using a defined set of metadata standards. This uh, can be preferably open standards like Dublin Core or any standard that's uh, um, well known and used in your, your, your industry. And you can also define your own custom sets of metadata. Um, of course, being open source and being open doesn't mean you want to share it with the whole world by default. So there are a lot of uh, access control layers in, in MediaMosa to control who can access what, from what, what location and what, uh, at what, mo what moment. And to get your data into MediaMosa, there are yeah, you can build a web interface and do an upload. You can use FTP for bulk uploads, uh, or you could even write really um, yeah, advanced ingest workflows, where you can get your get your data from other collections or, or, or uh, other sources. So then, after you've put it into MediaMosa, you want to prepare the data for further usage. So, in the case of video, you saw all these devices and all these systems and they have different protocols that they support. Um, nowadays, the H.264 protocol is really well, uh, well used, but it's not supported by every platform. And when you make a video with your mobile device and you load it to, uh, to the application, chances are it's not in that format already. So for video we have uh, included FFmpeg for the transcoding of any input video to various output types. And there you can vary the codecs, but you can also vary the uh, quality of the video. And you will always store the original file so you can rerun transcoding jobs 
after uh, after a while if you require new uh, new formats. Um, what you can also do is make sure that you have a short version of the video that can give you nice, nice freemium possibilities. So you have a short or a low quality video that's freely available and you should pay for the, for the higher quality or the full video. Uh, the files are also analyzed um, with specific jobs. There are some jobs pre-configured, but the job architecture is flexible so you can add your own jobs to, the, to this process. Um, a, a common job for a video is to create a still, like a poster image, uh, or you could, could create like a still every 10 seconds, so when you scroll through the video you could show the stills like, uh, like you see in, uh, in YouTube or Vimeo, that stuff. Um, we also did an experiment with the University of Leuven where we uh, did some speech to text. So there was a spoken video and the, the text on the video was analyzed and transformed, transformed into uh, normal text. Um, we used it as subtitles and of course it was really uh, something to laugh about because they, they had quite a miss, uh, some misses and um, it's not, not perfect. But you can also add a workflow to, to edit this, this subscription and get, you know, like 80% of the work done automatically and you only do the, the, the rest of the 20%. Another really uh, interesting text-to-speech or speech-to-text uh, um, benefit is that you can use it for your search index. If you don't get all the characters or all the words correctly, but you get most of them or the most important ones, you can always retrieve the video uh, based on, these, uh, on this metadata. The other way around, if you have scanned books, like we, we built an application for the University of Ghent, uh, where they, they are scanning books and they use MediaMosa for a workflow where the scanned documents are OCR'd and the text uh, and PDF, uh, text and images are combined as PDFA and are full text indexable. Well, and of course the the text, the text that you put into it are indexed. Brings us to the next step, the retrieval of this information. Um, it uses a contextual quer query language. It's an open standard where you can define what fields you want to look into. Uh, if you want to do an exact match, a partial match, uh, a multiple, uh, uh, you can combine multiple, multiple fields. So you can construct really advanced um, uh, search queries. And in the back, Apache Solar is used for the indexing of all this uh, data to keep it quick and uh, it also gives us extra information about uh, the, uh, the search queries like, uh, like the facets that, that are uh, uh, relevant. And then you want to use them in your application, so share them with, well, a mobile app, your web app, uh, an intranet, or maybe a television screen somewhere. Um, MediaMosa does the authentication on, with play requests. So you request a play ticket, you get authenticated, and then you'll be able to play the video or the file or whatever, you can download it. And you can either request just a single file or a, com or a complex player. Um, I al already mentioned subtitles. You can add media, multiple media files to, uh, uh, to, a, to an asset. And then you, you're, you're able to create a video player that has subtitles for the people that are hearing impaired or the uh, captions, like the spoken um, information about what's on screen for the people with a, a visual impairing. Uh, so it gives you great, great possibilities for web accessible or uh, 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 yeah, accessible video for everybody. You can, out of the box, it streams over HTTP, uh, HTTP progressive download, which works as a charm. Uh, YouTube does it, uh, does it the same way. Uh, but if you'd like, you can also add streaming servers, and it's especially interesting if you'd like, <laughs> I don't think people are liking it here, but if you would like to do stuff with DRM, and it also gives you more analytics about uh, the usage of the video. You can, uh, if you use a streaming server, you can see 
when the video was played, uh, at what, sec what second somebody stopped watching the video and that stuff, which you cannot get from the HTTP progressive download. You can also combine, um, well, good examples here, the, both the, the slides and, and the speaker are both recorded. You can combine multiple streams into a video player to have lectures. And then, uh, while well, we did this experiment, you can skip through the slides and the video will go to the right place in the, uh, uh, yeah, to the right time where the speaker is talking about that specific slides too. The last acronym is uh, OIE PMH. It's the uh, Open Archives Initiative Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. Um, you can provision your, your, your data, your metadata about your assets really easy with uh, this uh, OE PMA provider. And like that you'll, uh, you'll be able to share your, your metadata about your collection with other collections. It doesn't mean that you share your content, so it still has to get, your, get the play request from your repository, but you can easily share the metadata to combine different, uh, different collections in one central application. Some principles on which MediaMosa was built. Uh, it's open source, of course, GPL version 2. It's built on open standards and open protocols. Wherever we could find a, a standard or something that does a part of the application that we'd like, we, we use that. Uh, it's built on top of the Drupal 7 content management framework. Uh, and it uses Unix design principles. So every, uh, every part of the apl uh, application is isolated and can be replaced with another part. So for instance, we use FFmpeg for this video an analysis. You could easily use libav or any other uh, 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 tool. Or you could even just get complete other tools in, like the, the text processing, text-to-speech, uh, speech-to-text processing stuff. It's really, um, um, yeah, modular. We spend a lot of effort in the documentation, so the, the, the application is self-documenting. All the REST calls have a, a document query so, or a help query so that you can find the, um, information about this uh, in the application itself. An important thing to note is that it's, it's a backend. So when you install MediaMosa, you have an API, a REST API, and some admin features. The front end is the stuff that you have to build, uh, build yourself on top of this uh, powerful uh, application. Hosting MediaMosa is not too difficult. It runs on the uh, standard LAMP stack. Um, and we use LAMP practices for stuff like scaling, in, uh, scaling out and scaling up. Uh, high availability, the monitoring and that stuff. So it's really, uh, you can focus on, on stuff that you know or tools that you know and um, uh, yeah, it's just a LAMP stack so it's familiar for a lot of people and a lot of people can help you with that. Uh, it runs even on a, on a small USB, bootable USB stick with a laptop and you can scale it to anything. We, we advise to, to run it on multiple servers, especially for the transcoding servers you can uh, attach multiple servers and the job processing architecture will look at which server is available uh, because you don't want to wait too long if a large video is, trans is in, in a current transcoder whatsoever. Uh, if you don't want to care about hosting at all, uh, Inuits also provides uh, a SaaS solution called Media Salsa. Um, it's really easy to use, you just subscribe and you'll get an API key and credentials and you can get, can get started right away. And we, f we focus on the scaling, uh, high availability, uh, all, that, all that stuff. Then what about the front end? Because that's what the end user will see and will bring you value. Um, actually any application that can speak REST um, can use the 
backend of MediaMosa. So it's really simple to, to get started with it. Uh, REST is a, a nice, I, I like it a lot, a, a lean way of uh, setting up a web, web interface. Um, and you can have multiple front ends connect to the same MediaMosa instance. Within MediaMosa you can create containers, it's a multi-tenant system, so you can have several isolated applications connecting to the same server, but if you let them connect to the same container, they share their data, and it's really nice to, well, if you want to share your, your media across, uh, across applications. Um, if you're familiar with the Drupal of CMS, um, it's really easy for, to get started. We have various modules, uh, SDK, uh, a Drupal distrib distribution, so with some subversion commands and a Drush site install, you, you should be uh, up and running and have a basic uh, video website and can start developing right away. But um, like I said, any, any other language will, uh, will do. I guess you'll just have to uh, put some more effort in uh, getting started. So, after this, yeah, this, this list of features and, and things you can do, what, what are more specific use cases that can bring, bring, bring value to your, to your business or to your, uh, yeah, to, to, to whatever? Um, well, the most obvious thing is a, a video website. If you would like to have a, a YouTube for your home improvement videos, it's, it's set up, well, instantly. Um, but there are more, more, more video, video use cases that can be thought of. Um, like I said, you can insert a freemium model, so you can have, a, have videos that are, that are free to watch on a low quality. So you can easily start a, a business video website. Uh, we see it used a lot in the educational market. Um, and uh, the, it was built originally in, uh, for Surfnet and Kennisnet, so that's where we found the, um, where the application was founded, and that's of course strong, strongly attached to the higher and lower education of the Netherlands. Uh, and now we see that universities across the Netherlands are using it for their video platforms for students, but also for the, the, the MOOCs, the massive online open courses, a trend that you see where more, more and more universities are using uh, uh, lectures and, uh, and, and tests together in a platform so people can study online. Um, if you want to centralize your media and use it across applications, it's a really nice, uh, nice way to get started. So you can, for instance, have your marketing videos in one application and use them on any platform that you, uh, that you have. And a lot of institutes used for, the, uh, for their archives uh, because you can really well describe, the, describe it with a lot of metadata standards and it's really easy to, uh, um, to retrieve the information so you can store it in the way you want and retrieve it anytime. Also the, the storage point of, of MediaMosa is configurable so if you prefer uh, a tape storage for the, for, for, it's, which is cheaper uh, then you can, uh, can use that for some, uh, some storage of the original assets, for instance, and you can do the transcoded files or the, the smaller files on an on a expensive but fast storage system. So, um, MediaMosa was originally funded by Servnet and Kennisnet. Uh, but nowadays it has its own uh, uh, foundation. It, the foundation has three board members and they're looking at a, 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 the member board with a core committer that's already there, but some other vacancies are, uh, are available. Um, it got set up uh, this, the beginning of this year, in January it was founded and um, uh, well, we see it, we see it uh, growing every, uh, every month. Uh, we have a Google Plus community with a, a growing number of, uh, uh, of members. And um, a nice thing is with the MediaMosa Foundation, 
we were able to get some funding to get the new re release out because a lot of new features are developed for 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 customers or or by other other parties but to get them together in a tested and uh, uh, yeah, a new new release. It it always has some extra effort. So this time it was funded by the foundation, which was re which was really nice, of course. Um, if you'd like to experiment with Media Mosa, just to get uh, a feeling of what it can do for you, um, you can contact me, and I can provide you with a free um, free account for the for the Media Salsa platform. Um, yeah, I'll just give you some like uh, uh, some gigabytes of, of data on our uh, acceptance uh, platform, and you can just play around and uh, and do what you like. So, uh, contact me if you'd like to have an uh, account for that. And then finally, some URLs. I'm not really interested here, but more for the slides that will be uh, will be online afterwards. That brings me to the end of my presentation. So, I hope, or I don't know if anybody has any questions. Yes? Yeah, the question is if I can show a site, I can, yeah, I can show some stuff, yeah. Unless there are other questions then. Um, live demos, you gotta love them. Uh, okay. This works, right? So, so, um, yeah. Just let me put off my. Uh, um, I have a local, a local installation. Oh yeah, but I hope internet will be will be alright at this. Uh, okay. Yeah. A bit annoying that I have to look in that direction. Yeah, so this is a, um, a thing that I set up in ten minutes by running the the git commands and 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 uh, the drush side install. Um, I up, I'm gonna promote our uh, our movie. I uploaded some movies, and you see that they are transcoded to MP4, WebM, OGV. Uh, well, I only uploaded one of these. It looks uh, like all IT companies create exotic recipes with their computers, but how they do it differs greatly. Because if you take a closer look, most of them offer one. It's all solution for every. Of course, the internet's not too fast, so I'm, uh, I'm going to get... Uh, can you create uh, lower, uh, uh, lower resolution, or do you have to do the SEO? Um, I, I can. Um, I'm not sure, so if I go to edit... Uh, here are some of, uh, some of the, the profiles that are available now. Uh, the administrator can define what profiles are available within the application. So what I could do is activate this. Uh, well, the thing is, but I'm, I'm running it locally. I'm not sure if my colon is running and that stuff. So it, it will have to start this transcoding job, send it to the server and that stuff, but I'm going to save it. I'm not sure if it's going to work at this moment. Um, but in the background, the process will be started to get this uh, transcoding done. It's, uh, of course, a uh, time-consuming process, depending on the size of the video and the, si the, the speed of your uh, machine. Um, but this is the way, uh, that's the way it, um, uh, it normally works. Um, so, 
for this for this demo, I created two front ends. Uh, I have demo demo one and demo two, which I'm going to open. And they both connect to the same repository, so you will see exactly the same videos uh, on both websites. Um, and um, uh, what I have are um, the views of these uh, of these items. You see, you see a difference between the sites because on the front end, I define what videos are featured, so if you look at this front end, there are different videos featured than on that, that front end. And also I can say, well, in this, this front end I'd like to have a list of the popular uh, videos, so all popular videos are shown here. Um, and here I configure it to be popular trailers. So you can use the same data set but create completely different environments if, you, if you'd like to. Um, for Drupal, it's yeah, it's nice that you can integrate it with uh, oh, one minute, one minute, with the, the the editor. So if you'd like to add video within your content, you can use the media mouse or browser, select the video, oh. and there. Now you have the video. It's gone. Right. There was a question? Okay, so the question was if there are any timeline editing uh, tools. Um, do we have a really basic, uh, uh, how you call this? Fragmenten snijder, so you can cut a video. Um, it's not in this demo. We implement it for the Rijksuniversiteit Groningen. Um, and there you can say, okay, this is the start point of the video, this is the end point, and then you actually just get a time-coded asset, and that stops and starts at the moment that, you, that you'd like. For the Dutch Institute of Sound and Vision, Built and Geluid, we bu we've built an application for uh, uh, for, for primary education and there we combine the, the that so you can cut a fragment but you can also say okay I want to have uh, this this video then I want to have this text slide then I want to have that video so you can create your own montage well yeah quite basic uh, of course I can think of stuff like um, uh, the, the things that you can do with HTML5 video now so you can apply filters or, or, or stuff. So, so yeah, there, there are open source tools that you can use and integrate, uh, but I don't know if, a, if there's a complete suite and yeah, it depends on the use case, of course. But uh, yeah, in the end, it's, uh, it's all video, HTML, uh, JavaScript, JavaScript, so. I will look into that to them. <laughs> um, yeah, so this example has two sites, the same repository, and yeah, it's easy, uh, uh, quite easily set up. I can switch back to my presentation. Um, And then I can and show because the, the layout was quite quite simple. Uh, we recently built some video sites for uh, University of Amsterdam. Well, if you know the, the it, we, what we it's quite simple. We are not graphical designers, but we just take the the style guide of the the, the current website and implement it. And well, it's easy adjustable. This is also a responsive theme, so it scales to mobile devices. Um, a lookalike 
but then for the University of Tilburg. And another one for the uh, for the Rijksuniversiteit Groningen, Groningen University. Uh, so it's easy to customize the look and feel, and there you build on top of the, the Drupal or whatever your, your front-end application is, but on, on top of the Drupal framework. So the nice thing is that you have MediaMosa in the back for all the stuff you don't want to worry about with your video. So the storage the retrieval, the, the transcoding of the, the videos to make them available. And then you start playing in your front-end to create a really nice application. And because it's only a back-end, Sometimes you get questions like, okay, but show me, uh, show me MediaMosa. Well, it's just, just the API, actually, and, and some admin screens that are not, not really interesting. Um, the power, but it, it, it has a great power to it because you can, the variety of applications that you can build is really, really big. It's, uh, uh, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff uh, with it. Yeah. So, so it shouldn't be hard to not at all, no, no. Actually, um, uh, no, you, you just have to connect to the same server to, re to, to, to do your, uh, your calls, your search queries and, and, and retrieve the video. There's, there's some basic authentication to authenticate the application that's talking to the REST interface because not everybody can just query your database, of course. Uh, but after that protocol, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, it, it are like, two or three uh, calls, setting some cookies, and then you're done. Uh, but after that, you can, can query, uh, can, can use all the, I'm not sure, about 120 REST calls that are available. So are there access restrictions to the video? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, OK, the, maybe. So, um, by default, we have um, the access, and you can either say it's open or it's protected. You can attach a Creative Commons license, and you can say if it's visible. So you can also create. Uh, uh, an open video that's not visible, so only people with a link can view this uh, this video. There are um, other means to to uh, uh, to validate the the access. Uh, commonly used one is also the the doc the the domain a user is using. So, for for instance, the U University of Tilburg. Um, only people from the University of Tilburg domain can use that application, um, and well, you can you can specify whatever you want. With uh, it's just an access control layer that you can configure and extend the way uh, you want. So another strong part, I, I think, of uh, uh, MediaMosa is that it is a complete set of tools, but it's open. It's open source. It's based on Drupal, so you can really easily extend it, change its behavior. Um, like for for instance the metadata, if you want to have a different set of metadata, then you just configure it in the backend and you uh, you have it. Yeah. Yep. This this is this is the front end. Yeah. So you communicate uh, 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 who you are. So you have a user ID, uh, group group ID, uh, your um, uh, IP, domain, and that stuff. And then based on that, you can say, OK, this video can be shown, yes or no. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, well, that's an, the question is if how easy Drupal uh, a Drupal upgrade can be uh, can be integrated. Uh, we did a Drupal six to Drupal seven migration for the backend. Uh, it's it's doable. We also really improved the system while doing it. Um, 
but it's quite all right to have the backend, the MediaMosa instance, still running on Drupal 7 and start writing modules for Drupal 8. Uh, we will uh, actually we're starting our first Drupal 8 project uh, anytime soon. Not not with MediaMosa, but it, it won't be any longer, I guess. So uh, we will develop these modules and we will we will port them, I guess. It depends on, of course, our uh, community uh, time uh, we get from our boss. But yeah, it will be it will be ported in the end. But then. Yeah, uh, you can have a Drupal 8 website front end talking to MediaMouse, and it's it's just an API. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as, uh, only if you yeah, if you run it run it locally, of course, and you want to adjust it, then 